Hey, good evening, everybody. David here at Scale Models Midwest. Welcome back to the workbench. Thought I'd put a quick little video before I started working on the decals for this rush test in Camaro. It's going to be putting on some more decals this evening. But I've um, been watching some videos while I've been doing this, and one of the videos that was put out there by Matt over at Model Cars Videos um, asked the questions you know, why do we build what we build? and what's our inspirations, what's our favorite kits, and what have you. And um, it was a good question, good set of questions actually. And he had a, a good explanation for his reasons for doing what he did. And then he asked the community for their input. And sure enough, everybody kind of came out with their own answers, but ultimately there were a lot of similarities, you know, things like price. Um, they had a 1-1 car like that. They grew up around racing, like Hobby Dude 007. Uh, talking about my experiences like that in a moment and um, yeah just good memories ultimately of the kind of cars that we had in our youth or the cars we were exposed to in our youth so I'm really no different my first kits when I built I was about six years of age um, they're really little Lindbergh kits 164 scale kind of like the size of this Dodge Charger right here except hell of a lot more crude than this. I mean, look more like a Tootsie toy than it does this. Um, but still, you know, for a six-year-old kid, it was, it was a kit. Um, one was a Chevy truck, and the other one was a steak truck. I'll see if I can find pictures of them. I think I saw them one time before. So if I find them, I'll snap some pictures and add them to the video. The first real kit I built was about the age of eight or nine with my pop-pop, Russell Williams. He came down from Delaware to visit the family. And being from North Carolina, we didn't live too far from the coast, so he thought it'd be a good idea to build the Wright Brothers plane because we had gone out to the museum, checked it out, and so we bought a kit, and then he sat down with me over the weekend, and we built the kit, including sewing thread for the riggings and, you know, the supports for the uh, wings. It turned out to be a halfway decent kit. We didn't paint it, if I remember. And it sat up on the shelf for a good long time, don't know what ever happened to it after that probably like most of the other ones just got destroyed moving it around or what have you but as far as um, that's concerned uh, going back to that Dodge Charger that diecast I showed you my kit building came about as a result of buying a lot of Hot Wheels cars and you know in the hobby store there was one in the lower level of Crabtree Valley Mall that I really liked and of course Kmart back in the day they had a model car selection and I thought I'd buy a kit or two and try and put them together and you know the first ones I built they weren't painted I couldn't tell you what the first real ones were but I know I got more glue on them and on my fingers than, than uh, I'd care to remember but you know for an eight nine ten year old kid at the time you know you spend like three bucks on a kit you put it together it looks pretty cool um, and then uh, you go and buy and build another one and then another one and then pretty soon you hope you're getting better at the stuff you're adding paint and what have you and that's pretty much how it did for me um, about the age of 16 I kind of stopped building kits for just a few short years because you know I was working part-time jobs and wanting to save up money for a real car which I got and then uh, of course getting ready for college but um, when my parents and my brothers moved to Iowa I stayed behind so I could graduate high school and that's where I think my model building really took off because I was living with a lady and her son whose husband had moved with the same company my parents worked for. She had to stay behind so she could finish school and her son stayed behind so he could finish school. Um, down in their basement, they had a, a train set in one part of their basement that was really cool, very, very nice layout. But off to the side, there was this workbench and Robert had model kits on his bench that he was building, and one of them was the Johan uh, Superbird that uh, Richard Petty drove, and I thought that was the coolest thing. He was putting it together. I remember the little plastic axles and everything, and he said he had another one of the kits. Would I like to build it? I'm like, would I? Hell yeah. So I uh, sat at the bench, and I built my kit similar to his. It was uh, not nearly as good, I remember, but... It was a good enough kit to have me going back to that Crabtree Valley Mall store 
and buying a couple more kits. And I bought like four or five kits before I graduated high school. They were all built and then uh, moved up to Iowa. And up here in Iowa, in Des Moines, there was a place called Iowa Service Hobby out in Beaverdale. And uh, that became one of my favorite places to shop for model kits. They also had a Circus World, I believe it was called, about maybe six blocks literally from our house. So I would just run up there and they had a ton of kits. Some of the ones, if anybody remembers the Golden Wheels, you collect them and um, you can get like a free kit or what have you. I also became a member of a model building club way back then. And I just built all sorts of kits, you know, cars mostly. But I remember the model car club sent us a jet, maybe a plane, boat. Uh, gas truck I remember one time and I'd like to think it was monogram that put these out but I can't remember um, but much like the Salvino's JR model building club you know they sent you out a kit once a month you built it you waited for the next one and uh, just kept on so, I mean I had a fairly good collection of model car kits at that time sad to say none of them exist except in memory the kits that I've got now, I've probably had over the past maybe 20 to 25 years at best. Because the other ones were just lost to time, moves, damage. I gave some kits away to friends. Um, had a garage sale one time and I just got rid of a ton of kits. And uh, do I regret any of it? Nah, just part of life. But as you can see here, you know, over time, uh, non-painted glue bombs gave way to better skills. And then ultimately, being a content creator on YouTube, building kits that uh, hopefully you all enjoy. And that's basically where I'm at now. And as far as you know, what I build and, and why I build, well, I build what I want to build. Uh, price doesn't matter. I like kits. Um, I like remembering some of the kits that I built back in the day that are being reissued now, like the... Uh, streaker vet i cannot wait to see that in the store in fact tomorrow my daughter and i are going to go up to the hobby store and see if they've got them and if they do i'm going to buy every single one they've got because i thought that was the coolest vet out there and i'm just going to buy them and start building a couple of them the way i want to build them that's another reason is like why i build what i build i mean because i have a vision and i want to put it together the way i remember seeing a car or seeing in pictures and what have you um, but they just, they just run the gamut as far as what I build. I like big cars. I like big engines. I like the cars from the fifties. I like moonshine cars from the, uh, forties and fifties, the stuff that started NASCAR. Cause you know, grew up in North Carolina and Raleigh, Nightdale, actually where I grew up, we weren't that far away from Randleman and Level Cross. I mean, home of Richard Petty, Charlotte Motor Speedway, Rockingham Drag Strip, um, and North Wilkesboro Raceway, which I would love to get back out there now that that place is being redone and just see races again and just kind of soak up all that memory and then just build race cars. I do like building race cars, but like I said, I build anything. I've built a tank for my daughter so she could display it along her American Girl dolls. I've built uh, other kits with her to kind of get her involved in the hobby and a couple of the kits that are on the shelf my shelf and hers, she displays proudly from a shocking pink Camaro to a metallic red uh, Corvette and some other items I'll be showing you as you see in the thumbnail. I built kits for my wife. I built kits for my wife boss, as I told you about in uh, previous videos. And then, of course, I've also built cars that I haven't seen anybody else build, like the Ron Keslowski Charger using a Salvinus JR Charger. I did that on a multi-part build series because I hadn't seen one built. I thought it was a unique subject. I like Brad Keselowski. So I built the car and really happy with the results and also really happy with the feedback I received on the build in the comments because it shows that I've gotten better at what I'm doing and it just makes me want to keep building more. So um, I wanted to show you some of the ones that, that I've built and, and why I built them and then just kind of put that question out to you if you haven't already answered Matt or some of the other videos. Um, what do you build? Why do you build them? What's your inspiration? So let me show you what all I've got here. 
Now for starters, I think I've already shown this one off, but as far as an inspiration, one of my favorite cars of all time that I wish I could own, and I came close to owning one, is a 71 Roadrunner. Now, the Roadrunner I looked at was a lime green or sublime. It had the strobe stripes, but it was in someone's backyard, sunk up to the entire frame in dirt, and I didn't know if it was salvageable, but I remember seeing it every time we drove by it, and I wished that I could own it someday. I mean, I just thought it was a sweet car that fusilized body shape. The closest I could get was building the monogram version of this. And I believe these are Otaki tires and wheels. Kind of give it that little rake. And uh, I really liked it. So that's the inspiration for that car. Why I built that one. Got another one for you. I teach martial arts and I have for almost 25 years. I've been a student for that long as well. And this one is, I like to say if I remember correctly, an AMT snap fast kit of the Chevy 3500 Dually. That's not really a Dually, it's uh, big tires out back. A um, couple fun things on this one. It was my first attempt at actually printing out decals using Tester's decal film and spray. And they turned out really nice. I built a school bus, one of the uh, old Tom Daniels kits with the same decals on it. And I gave that to my master instructor, Brandon. Um, he might still have it. I don't know. This one I kept. But the other fun part about it is one of my friends that came over and saw this, he has a truck very similar to this. And he asked if he could have this one or if he could buy it from me. And I'm like, no, but let's take a look at Model Roundup and see if they got it. Uh, found out this particular kit's like a hundred bucks. And so he looked back at me. He says, I'll give you a 10 for yours. And I'm like, nah. So this one's still staying in my collection. And someday I'll build it. Or if not build it, I'll detail it more. The white paint has kind of yellowed over time. But uh, I intended to build this alongside a Galaxy Limited trailer that I still have. But I haven't built. So I can make that a race car hauler. Put a couple race cars in it. But... Uh, haven't gotten to that yet. Someday. And that's the other thing. I have kits, like everybody else, that someday we'll build. Will we ever build them? Well, time will tell, but someday. i got to keep thinking about that. Got another one to show you. Okay, this one doesn't even look like the kit it came out of. This is the old Pro Nova that have, or that has, the uh, detachable fenders ill-fitting fenders at that. You can probably still see it there. It's kind of ill-fitting. But my wife likes Novas. Loves Novas. And this one I built the way she wanted it. Black interior. The blue metallic paint. Nice aftermarket rims. And just for fun, I rated one of my Corvette models for the ZR1 engine. She thought it was really cool. She had it on display at her job for a good while before I brought it home. But uh, never got around to building a real one for her. Her dad and I talked about getting one and, and building it up. Now, not with an LT1 or a ZR1 motor, but just a regular old 350. And I'm sad to say he got sick. And, you know, unfortunately he passed on before we had a chance to realize his dream. This is another one of those someday deals, but not in kit form. It's a someday deal in real form. I would love someday to help build... A Nova from her wife. Um, but uh, at least for now, got this one. Kind of like an inspiration. So there you have it. I got one more to show you. This last one is a huge model. But also the recipient of someone who gives me some of the biggest inspirations to building kits. You know, my daughter Chelsea, huge, huge Sean the Sheep fan. As my wife and I are too. She saw this kit in the store one day and asked me if I could buy it and we could build it together. So we have. We built this kit together. It took us a good while because we just were busy with all sorts of stuff. She's in school. I was working. But after about six months, this is what we ended up with. Uh, one of her first attempts at painting with uh, spray paint and I had to sand some areas that had some runs but still turned out really well. 
And like I said, you know, for me, a lot of the inspiration is from other people. If someone says they like this kit and I build it, sometimes I just give it to them. Uh, for the ones that I have in my house, probably 10 kits I built because my wife and my daughter liked them. And the rest of them I bought because of memories of friends who had the similar car in high school or cars that I could never afford in real life, you know, like the Buick Riviera or, um, I don't know, just pretty much half the cars in my collection can't afford them nowadays. It was too expensive for everybody. But ultimately, if you can't afford it in real life, you can afford it in miniature, and then you can build it up the way you want. You can even paint it a different color. You can super detail it or do it box stock, you know. The possibilities are endless. So that's pretty much how it is for me, you know, what I build and, and why I build them. So with that, um, I'll put the question out to the rest of you who haven't really responded yet. What inspires you? What do you build? And why do you build it? Or why do you build them? Whether it be a car, a boat, trucks, trains, you know, I'd like to hear what you do and why you do it. So great question again, Matt, that you asked the community and uh, great responses from everybody so far. Hope they keep up answering that question, and I hope with that they keep building. So with that, we'll catch you in the next video. Take care.